Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to process a wildlife image with Luminar 4. This is our raw file. This is what we're starting out with. And when we're all done with Luminar 4, this is what we're going to end up with. Numerous people have requested that I demonstrate how to process a wildlife image using Luminar 4. I'm going to process this image uh, mainly because it has a lot wrong with it, so I'm going to have to do uh, quite a bit of processing in Luminar 4 to make it look halfway decent. We're going to jump right into it. I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm in the edit panel. And this was shot with a DSLR, so I really need to take care of lens corrections, and I need, or at least I prefer to do that very early in my workflow, so I'm going to do it right away. Uh, to get to lens corrections, you would go to the canvas panel. If you go over here on the right, you see that little pencil and ruler, that's the canvas panel. And if we click there, at the very bottom, you'll see lens in geometry. We'll click there, and there's three checkboxes, and the first one is the main one, that one will remove any optical distortion that was introduced by my lens. And as soon as I click it, you'll see the image kind of move a little bit. We'll click the other two as well to remove chromatic aberrations and to fringe. And I'm done. So I'm done with that part. Now I'm going to process it as I normally do. I'm going to do global adjustments first. And when I talk about global adjustments, these are adjustments that are going to affect every single pixel in the image. And after I do global adjustments, then I'll do local adjustments where I want to just adjust specific parts of the image. So we're going to go to this Essentials tab. This is this one right here with the kind of sun uh, icon. We're going to go to the top light. And typically what I'll do is I'll look at the image and, and see what does it need most. What is the most, the biggest problem with the image? In this case, it's a little muddy looking, maybe a little dark. So I'll go right to Shadows. And I'm going to open up Shadows uh, quite a bit. So we'll open those up. And correspondingly, I'll bring sh uh, highlights down just a little bit. And um, I think I'll get a white and black point. It's still a little muddy, still a little dark, but I'm going to resist moving exposure right now. I typically like to do highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks before I even consider moving the exposure slider. So we'll go to the advanced settings. The very first two sliders are whites and blacks. And I'll move the whites to the right. I'm just going to eyeball it. I just want to make sure I'm not blowing anything out, that I see detail in those white feathers. And similarly with the blacks, I'm just going to move that to the left a little bit. And again, I don't want to uh, crush the shadows so much that I'm losing detail in the darker feathers of the bird. So I think that looks pretty good right there. I'll go to contrast. I'm going to inch that up just a little bit. And after I've done that now, I've did the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, and, a, and the contrast, it's still just a tiny bit dark. So I am going to go to the exposure slider, and I will uh, tweak that up maybe a third of a stop. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, now looking at the image, uh, it looks a little cool to me. This was a uh, midsummer day when I took this shot. There was a pond behind the great blue heron. It was kind of a warm look. And it's a little bit too cool. So I'll go to the drop down first and look at these settings here. Uh, daylight, it's way too warm. Uh, cloudy's going to be about the same, right? Uh, shade's going to be even warmer. So those aren't anything I really like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the white balance with the eyedropper. It's targeted adjustment for white balance. So we'll click there. And our cursor turns into an eyedropper tool. And it's uh, encouraging me to pick a target neutral. So typically you want to pick something that is in the scene that didn't have color in it. And that would be the white feathers of the bird. So, so we'll just click right there. And eh, it's all right, I guess. Let me try it again. We'll get another white balance adjustment. I'm trying to click the whitest feathers. That doesn't look too bad right there just a little warmer than what it was. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, I don't think I'm going to resist doing any more uh, contrast or anything with the tone curve, although I often do it. And I think the profile, the Luminar default is fine, by the way. 
I would do the profile first, actually, before I did any adjustments, if I didn't like the profile, because the profile will often change the contrast and the light on the subject considerably. Uh, so, uh, you know, do that first, then do any sliders you want to do. So I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm not going to do any AI enhance or anything uh, because on this image it's going to affect the background and I really don't want that background to distract uh, from the bird. So I'm not going to do that. Same thing with AI structure. It's just going to make the background look too prominent in the shot and I really don't want it to be uh, noticed as much as the bird. I will go to color though and I'm going to add just a little bit of saturation, just maybe uh, about 10 there. And then uh, the background still, it's very colorful and bright. So I'm going to go to advanced settings and I'm just going to take some of the saturation out of that background a little bit uh, with this kind of targeted color uh, HSL adjustment. So I'll just bring that down a little bit and I think that looks better. Um, we're not converting it to black and white. Now, Details Enhancer, again, will affect all the pixels. You can see how... I, I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to do some local adjustments to sharpen the feathers of the bird and the eye of the bird and whatnot. So I'm not going to do anything there. I am going to go to Denoise, though. There is a considerable amount of noise, as you can see, in the background particularly. And there really... I don't see any color noise, but I am going to move the color Denoise slider just up a little bit to maybe 15-ish. Then for luminosity to noise, uh, there is a lot of lumin luminosity noise. So we'll start at 40. Typically what I'll do is I'll pick a, a number that's like in, you know, 30, 40, 50, something like that, and look at it. And actually that looks pretty good. Then I'll try to the, like, I'll go to 30 then and see what that looks like. Now 30, of course, is introducing more noise. Then I'll see what 35 looks like. So I kind of drill down. Uh, start out with a number that's in the tens, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, then go 10 lower, then drill down 5, something like that. And I think uh, 35 looks good. The reason why you just don't want to, you know, uh, recklessly push up luminance to noise is because it is going to so soften parts of the image that you may not want softened. In this case, we want the bird to be really sharp and the feathers to be crisp. And when you're adding a lot of luminosity to noise, you're going to soften all that. So I prefer not to. So I think that looks uh, pretty good right there. You could go to advanced settings. There's only one slider there, boost. And all that does is if you move it to the right, it's as though you move both these sliders to the right more. If you move it to the left, it's though you moved them to the left more. So I don't think that slider's that effective or that really, that really needed at all uh, for that matter. So there's uh, denoise. We're not doing landscape enhancer and we're not going to worry about the vignette yet. What I'm going to do now is um, pretty much down with the global adjustments, but I have a sensor spot, but I actually think that's something that was on my lens right here. So we're going to get rid of that. So we need to go to the eraser tool or the clone and stamp tool. Those are found under this uh, area here, canvas again. This is right here. And I think I'll use the clone and stamp tool. I think that actually will work pretty good. So we'll go to the clone and stamp tool. It'll put us in clone and stamp mode. And when you start out in clone and stamp mode, it's going to give you a cursor that's a target. So you must pick the area of the image where you want to grab pixels from. And I want to grab pixels uh, right here below this. So I'm just going to click once with the mouse button. And I, I'm going to sample there. Now you can see the uh, cursor turned into a brush. Uh, the inner circle is 100% opacity, and it's going to feather out as it goes out to the outer circle. And we want that inner circle basically to just cover that sensor spot or dust spot or whatever it is. And I'll hit the left bracket key uh, to make this a little smaller. The right bracket key would make it a little larger. So it covers that spot completely and I'll just click once with the left mouse button and it's disappeared. So it did a good job right there and we'll click done. All right, now I want to work on some local adjustments. I want to make the bird's eye a little brighter and I want to add uh, some sharpening and detail into the beak of the bird and some of these feathers that are around the bird's face. The other feathers are good. 
but around here it looks a little bit kind of blurred for some reason. So I want to take care of that. So again, we're going to go into the Essentials tab, and we're going to go to Light. Now I want to make the bird's eye brighter. I'll close down the advanced settings there so it's just a little more uh, compact. And I'm going to move exposure to the right. Now you're going to see, oh, actually I should do, um, I got to do this on a new adjustment layer. I'm sorry. Uh, so we'll go to Layers first. And then we're going to go to this plus sign and we're going to add a new adjustment layer. So this, all these adjustments, these local adjustments are going to be on their own layer. So we'll go back to the essentials tab. I'll go back to the light tab and we're going to go to exposure. Now, even though this is on its own layer, it's going to affect everywhere when I first do it. So as I move it to the right, you're going to see that it makes everything bright, but we want to apply it now just to the bird's eye. So we're going to go down to Edit Mask and get a brush. Now over here on the top left, you'll see the brush attributes. You want to paint in the adjustment, so make sure that is active. And I'm going to use a softness of 100% and an opacity of 100%. And for the size, what you want to do is use the bracket keys on your keyboard again to affect the size. I'm going to use the left bracket key and make this considerably smaller. I want it to be just big enough so that it's painting on the bird's iris. So as soon as I click with the left mouse, mouse button once, you'll notice it removed the exposure adjustment I did from everywhere except right where I clicked. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna paint this adjustment right on the eye. Now, of course, that's way too bright. So we'll come in and I'll adjust it. I'll bring it down a little bit. Something like that. I think that looks pretty good. You just want that a little brighter. Now what I want to do is I want to add some detail, especially to the bird's beak. So we're going to go to the details enhancer. Now, again, uh, when I adjust this, it's going to go everywhere. All right. So we'll go to small details. You can see how it's affecting everywhere. And I'll leave it real high. So uh, depending on what resolution you're watching this video in, so you could see what I'm doing. So it's everywhere. So I need to mask this. So it's just on the bird's beak and maybe on some of these feathers around the bird's eye. So we're going to go to edit mask again, brush. And again, we want to paint in the adjustment and I'm going to use, uh, for, to start out with, I'm going to use the opacity at hundred. I'm going to get the right bracket key and make this bigger and start painting. You can see that as soon as I clicked, it removed the adjustment from everywhere except where I'm painting. So we'll get a smaller brush, get in here a little better. All right. So I kind of like that. Now, um, here's before, I'm gonna turn this off and there's after. Okay, now um, I do want to sharpen it around this area as well. But for over here, I don't want to have it as strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the opacity, and I'm going to pull the opacity down to maybe 40%. And I'm going to get a larger brush, and then I'm going to kind of brush it in up here. Like that. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I will now, maybe it's a little strong. Uh, I'll pull this down. So it's pulling it down everywhere that I brushed, including the beak of the bird. And I think right around 50. That looks pretty good and pretty much the way I remember the, what this bird looked like when I was looking through the viewfinder of the camera. So I like that. I think that's pretty good. We could come in and sharpen as well. There, maybe a little bit of sharpening. Sharpens a little more subtle than the small, medium, and large details. We also could move some of those as well if we wanted to, but I think that looks pretty good. Um, overall, I think I'm pretty much done except for one thing. I want to add a vignette uh, to the image. So I'm going to go to the vignette tab and I'm going to choose the subject. I want the vignette centered around the bird's eye. So I'm going to click there and the cursor turns into a plus sign. And I'm just gonna click once right in the middle of that bird's eye. So this vignette now will be centered around that bird's eye. We're gonna go to the amount slider 
and pull this down to give us a dark vignette. If we went to the right, we'd get a light vignette, but we want a dark one. And the reason why I like to put a vignette on it, sometimes if you darken the edges of the image, it will push everyone's gaze more towards the middle. And I want everyone to look at the bird's eye and then kind of look out from that point. Um, so we could mess around with size as well. What I suggest you do is put a mount on full. Then you could get a better like look at what some of these sliders do. And then advanced settings, you have roundness. And then you have feathering. So we're going to feather it a little more. And you could add an inner light, which kind of just brightens up that center part of the vignette. Now I'm going to leave that down for now. I'm going to go back up to a mount and kind of back that off like that. And then we could maybe see what that inner light does. If I like what that does, I kind of do. I kind of do. Back it off even more. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let's do a before after. We'll go up to the top where this eyeball is and I'll click with the left mouse button and hold that in. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. And I think the vignette, I still be, I'm always fussy with the vignettes, uh, I'll tell you the truth. A little too heavy. I'm going to pull that down a little bit. There's before and there's before after. There, I think that looks a little better. That's it. That's how I would go about um, processing a wildlife image in Luminar 4. I start out with the global adjustments. The global adjustments are just going to adjust for light mainly and color temperature get those set. Then I'll do local adjustments to add sharpening and to make parts of the image brighter or darker where I want people to look. Typically where it's brighter is where I'm going to want someone to look. Darker where I don't want them to look, like the vignette dark around the edges so they look more towards the middle. And uh, that's pretty much how I do it um, just about every single time. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.